I miss you boys. It's been more than 20 years. My God, we were young. Well, it was a young country then, full of promise and hope. Anything was possible if, if you were an American. Wasn't the same for other folks. Down south, Cuba. Hell, they just wanted to be left alone. Breathe free like we done. Them folks in Spain, the old world wouldn't let them. It caused quite a fuss.
time has arrived for this great nation of ours to step out upon the world stage. So let the spotlight fall on us. I am reminded today of the words of George Washington, who said, to be prepared for war is the most effectual means to promote the peace. We ask for a great Navy because no national life is worth having if we are not willing to defend it. All the great masterful races have been fighting races. And to lose the fighting virtues is to lose the right to stand at all. There are higher things in life than the soft enjoyment of material comforts. And it is through strife and the readiness for strife that a man or a nation must win greatness. So let the world know that we are here and willing to pour out our blood, our treasure, our tears, and that America is ready and, if need be, desirous of battle. I have something for him. It's an urgent dispatch. Oh, an urgent dispatch, sir. This time of night? Are you Mr. Hurst? Of course I'm Hurst. An urgent message from Washington. War! And thus began the Spanish-American War. I, of course, didn't care to give it much concern at the time as I was otherwise employed. I bet there's a watch at the end of that chain. Yeah. Well, my, my. A beautiful woman like you must have a husband. Don't take your hood off. Now everybody's gonna recognize us. Oh, I just had to have a better look at this. How are you? That's all I got. That it? That's it. You travel a little light, boy. Hey, you're not hiding anything, are you? You wouldn't want me to... Have him search you like them Spaniards search that Cuban woman. You read the newspapers, don't you? You scurvy knave. What is that? Is that a journal? Boy, give me that journal. Make it quick. Get in there. Let's go, everybody. Hurry up. Get in. You tell that posse and Bisbee. Leave the married men at home and be well-mounted. You can bet on that, mister. I got a good look at you. You'll hang for this. Yeah, we'll probably sooner than later. Ha! Ah, get out of here! Fight out! <laughs> making it. Posse. Posse? The hell you say? They headed this way? Yeah, I'm right ahead of this way. Man, can you get a decent meal without interference?
Theodore, as a mother, I am opposed to war. But if you're going, I see no reason why you can't take Hamilton and his chunks. His grandfather was Secretary of State. That should mean something. Yes, I understand you'll do your best, Theodore. I expect that. Thank you. And give my regards to Edith. Goodbye. Bravo, Mrs. Fitch. <laughs> Sometimes it helps to know a big shot. Mother, you are extraordinary. It's the duty, the honor, of the patrician class to lead by the sword. What type of unit is Theodore putting together? He's asking for Western types. Cowboys, <laughs> Indian fighters, mountain men. Military glory, Hamilton. That's what we're entertaining. Why not? If we are an emerging power, then we gentlemen are its emerging leaders. Men haven't seen a real war in 30 years. This could very well be our last chance. Enough talk. All that matters is to go. And you, Craig? We'd so like to have you. I'll have Father make a commemorative bowl out of silver, and it will have our names inscribed on the side. And if one of us should not return? The more luster to the name. We in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. The fewer the men, the greater the share of honor. You're here. If it is a sin to covet honor, then I am the most offending soul. <laughs> <laughs> Men shall think themselves accursed, they. And hold their manhoods cheap while any speak that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day. Woo! Woo! Hey, Eli, come on! Come on! Eli! Eli, you want to go to war? What? We're at war with Spain! You want to go to war? Hell yeah! Idiot, look what you did. You have done nothing but live off of me. You can't do a job of work. And all this talk about patriotism is just bunk. You just want an excuse to leave. Man's got to do what he has to do, Sarah. Yeah, and the woman's got to do everything else. I might be late for dinner. I cannot live without the feel of your skin. I need it like like water. Honor means nothing. My, my future means nothing if I have to live without you. I'm not afraid to die. I'm just afraid to have to live without you. I will tell my father I cannot go to war. I will stay. To hell with him. Bueno, mijo. Se llegó el momento. Pues que Dios me lo bendiga. Mire, con ese rifle, Yo peleé contra los apaches y a defender en alto el nombre desde el castillo con toda su gloria. And whatever you do, don't do anything stupid. <laughs> and, and never volunteer for anything. No, hombre. Después te ponen a pelar papas o algo. Cut over to Sidewinder. Steal up some fresh mounts. Get out. Hey, no matter what happens, we meet right back here when it's over. 
Hey, man, compare me. You're a fool. How can you expect me to respect a fool? Young Bill Goodrich is going. Now then, he's a fool, too. I'll tell you the truth. You don't hear it often. Honor is a word someone thought up to get other people to stay in line. This manliness espoused by some deluded, upstart New York cowboy isn't real. Being alive is real. Being wealthy and warm and well thought of is real. It's what any man really wants if he's honest. And you have that. Where are you going? Water. Take something stronger. I'd prefer the excuse that you're drunk. None of you knows a farthing of life. Life is hunger and anger and dirt. It's not polo or football or boxing. Your grandfather knew all about life, and he didn't recommend it. That's why we're rich. What if you turn out a coward? How will you feel then? I'm afraid of that. Perhaps more than I am of dying. Don't you understand? I'm more afraid of dying some rich boy in his bed and never knowing hunger, never knowing dirt, never knowing pain, never knowing honor, never knowing courage. Damn you. I deserve to know. You go, and you may get what you deserve. Edith, hmm? let's get to the point. Let's not pretend. You've made no mention of it. Of what? My insurance premiums are paid. I've been a good father and a good husband, and you have six children to prove it. Our finances are sound. Mm -hmm. You have no reason to think me irresponsible. And nothing you can say will make me change my mind. I want you to go. It's your war. You've done your best to start it. You know that. No, I want you to go and fight. And I hope to God you get your fill of it. And then I won't have to hear about it any longer. so sure? Absolute certainty. But if you don't, I'd be devastated. I can't imagine life itself without you. You're a force of nature. That's what you wanted to know, isn't it? country. When's that train pulling out? You boys are enlisting in the Arizona Volunteer Cavalry. How soon is that train leaving? Right now. We'll join. We will? Thank you. 
Sheriff O'Neill. I am. Oops, we got here just on time. You did that. They're all here, Sheriff. You know who that is? Nope. Up there is Bucky O'Neill, Sheriff of Yavapai County. Hell, he's killed over 35 men. Sure you ain't never heard of him? Well, I never met him personally. Me neither. That there's his wife. <coughs> He's gonna be our captain. seen you boys someplace before? Expect to. Oh, and madam, nice to meet you, you look lovely. Governor, how are things Pleasure. in Delaware? Fine, well, I hope. <laughs> this is really very nice to meet you. Oh, Excuse more me. good Republicans. Oh, Always good, good to see you. Lovely. Yeah. How you do? Oh, uh, Leonard! <laughs> Leonard! Thank God. We must talk now. Oh, Edith, good evening. Excuse me. Edith, Laura. So you finally you got him drashing out of the house. Yes, barely, Leonard. Are you absolutely yeah. stunning? Great news from the War Department. Full regiment of volunteer cap. Oh, I don't know anything about commanding a regiment. I don't even know to whom to salute. Superior officers would be a good start. I have no idea of supply or organization. I can learn I'm a quick study, but this whole thing could be over while we're stumbling around. We can't waste a minute. We? Theodore, what are you up to? You must take command of the regiment. Good evening, young Marine. Good evening, sir. You see, you are a real soldier. Medal of Honor winner against the Apache. You should take the Colonel C, and I'll be the, uh, whatever, Lieutenant Colonel. We make a good team, and you know it. Come now, Leonard. I may be a lot of things, but a fool isn't one of them. I know when to ask for help, and when to keep my mouth shut and listen. And you'd take orders from me. Sir? Gladly, sir. What do you say, Leonard? You know you're going anyway. Why not at the head of the wildest madcap regiment since the Mongols rode the steps? Theodore, do you know that you're mad? Well, it's never bothered him before. Oh, he does. <laughs> Senator Hannah! Good God, Leonard, please help me. Watch yourself, baby. Ladies, brace yourselves. Roosevelt! May I introduce Mademoiselle Henriette Adler, recently arrived from Paris. Enchanté, mademoiselle. Permettez-moi à vous présenter à mon capitaine Leonard Wood. Enchanté. Et sa femme Laura, ma femme Edith. Charmed. 
Senator, we must not waste time. Businesses and commercial markets must not stand in the way of justice or opposition to tyranny. Are we to become a rich, refined culture? Roosevelt, you become are. soft. Our ladies' flower. The fiber of the ladies' take care flower. Of pardon, mademoiselle. Un mille pardon. Permettez-moi. Right now, we are on the verge of producing more than we can consume. That means your market, Senator, and who by God will defend those markets? A bunch of self-interested millionaires like your friends? The fighting man who you will need. Peu importe, un people in France, I think you should respond to this situation with prudence. <clears throat> prudence is the word I believe you're searching for, dear. Thank you, madam. You mean the same people who violated our Monroe Doctrine by invading Mexico during our Civil War? Oh, Roosevelt! Well, if it were up to me, I would drive every European flag from the continent by bayonet point! Mon Dieu. I think I shall faint, sir. Feel free, please, fall right over. Leonard? Uh, Leonard, please! Roosevelt, you, we'd be fighting half the world if you were president. The president has the backbone of a chocolate eclair. Theodore! He's our commander-in-chief. Yes. Do you have a wife? Yes, I believe that's me. My farm, Edith. What does she do with you? But well, uh, she she supports me, and she approves of my going to Cuba to see the elephant. That I can understand. Well, perhaps the Spanish will see to their duty. Come, ladies, let's go. Come, come. Au revoir, et t'es un grand An appalling woman. You know, Edith, this kind of higgly-piggly business might be fine in the salons of Paris, yes, but it does not apply here in America. Very good thing. Leonard, I do believe I convinced the senator. Very good. I think he will join the fight. Mr. President, the Honorable Joseph Wheeler. Come in, Congressman. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. I will. Good morning, Mr. President. Morning, General. The Civil War ended 33 years ago. Uh-huh. Now, to those of us in the North, that seems like an awfully long time. But to the folks in the South, it seems like, well, just yesterday. That's right. We're concerned about how folks in the South will react to war with Spain. We have to move troops through the South to get to Florida and Cuba. Uh-huh. A lot of our best units are Negro troops. Buffalo soldiers. Ninth and 10th Cavalry. Uh-huh. Now, how would the folks in, um... Richmond and Atlanta feel about that. Ooh, I see. General, you were one of the greatest cavalry officers in the Confederacy. Let me tell you something. Bedford Forrest had 31 horses shot out from under him, but he shot 32 Yankees. <laughs> Forrest was better. Uh, General, what we're getting at is if you would be interested in taking command of all the volunteer cavalry units. Well, I'm a lot older now than I was in the Civil War. Oh, but you are spry, General. Very spry. We could use someone from the South to participate at a very high level of command. What you need is a Southerner. Have you got a cigar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. President. You gentlemen wouldn't be trying to snooker an old Democrat out of his chair on the House Ways and Means Committee, would you? Well, Joe, we need Democrats in this war, too. That's very smart, Mr. President. It'll have to be a real command, no bull manure. I'd have the rank as Major General. Answer only to the Corps Commander. Whole cavalry command. Regulars as well as volunteers. Negroes, whites, whatever. My son just graduated from West Point. I'll need him on my staff. You boys want a cigar? But don't worry too much about them people in the South. There's nothing they like better than a good fight. <laughs> Good day, gentlemen. Oh, we don't even celebrate the 4th of July. <laughs> Maybe after this, we will. <laughs> I think you are a scoundrel, Randolph. 
wholly without conscience. Did Freddy go too far? You don't really think those people blew up that boat now, do you? A naval blockade is in the offing, gentlemen. A naval blockade is hardly a war. Furnish the pictures, Freddy, and I'll furnish the war. Very good, Willie. Well said, Rando. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Cheers. Remember the Maine and the hell with Spain. It was your appointment, was he not? Oh, I had a hand in it. <laughs> and it was your plan that had him coal his warships and be ready to sail for Manila Bay? Secretary Long was on vacation in New England. And you took the initiative? I suppose so. But that Commodore Dewey was like a wolfhound slipped from the leash, wasn't he, Leonard? I suppose he was, Theodore. And Roosevelt is like a young second lieutenant, often overreaching, frequently insubordinate, brash, but successful this time. Don't try it with me. Yes, sir. Now, I leave for San Antonio tomorrow morning. But Theodore, we will not get to Cuba unless we have crag, smokeless, repeating carbines. Don't come to San Antonio without them. Do I make myself clear? Precisely, sir. Oh, and one more thing. The regiment has been expanded. You may bring your Fifth Avenue contingent. Oh! Hamilton Fish's mother should be delighted. Bully! Colonel! I didn't catch that salute. Stop! from, partner? Arizona! New Mexico! We took you boys long enough. What the hell were you doing? We thought we were going to Cuba by our lonesome. Well, they kept stopping the train, so the girls would give us pies and beer. Same thing happened to us. Is that right? That's right. What's your name, friend? Uh, Nash. Ah, Henry Nash. Well, I'm Henry Bardshaw. Lordsburg. <laughs> Two animals. What is this? Not bad. You made that? So where are you from? Uh, Arizona. Mostly yeah. kind of all over. Oh, that. What's that? Hey! It's a pleasure to meet you, Arizona. I am Rafael del Castillo. It's for me an honor. <laughs> Good to meet you, too. <laughs> Works there. I'm O'Neill. The governor of Arizona put me in temporary command of our volunteers. Yeah, it's O'Neill. Bucky O'Neill. You met my staff? Maximilio Luna, my captain from New Mexico. Mr. Brody here is from Tucson. Brody? Brought a good bunch of boys in. Thank you. This is Captain Alan Caprin, one of the finest officers in the regular cavalry. Pleasure, sir. He can teach you anything you need to learn. And frankly, I don't think there's anything you can do he can't do better. Of course, sir, that will change. Colonel, sir. Carry on. Sergeant Farnsworth, stand by to receive sir. his recruits. Yes, sir. I realize I'm short on formal military training, but that might taste of fight. What I'd like to ask, sir, is to have a loose hand in the training of my men. It seems somewhat unconventional, but I know what is needed, sir. Mr. O'Neill, this is a somewhat unconventional unit. Riding broke stock. Yeah, someone else is one of your kind. I'll ride him. 
I can write anything with hair on it. Get it done, son. Thanks. He didn't break an egg in you, did he? Yeah, it don't hurt much. You said you write anything with hair on it. I didn't say how long. Well, well he's yours now, and yours. You get a broker, you can eat him. Excuse me, gentlemen. Do you know where we might find Colonel Roosevelt? My name is Hamilton Fish. These men and I have come to join the regiment. Hamilton Fish. I'm Henry Nash, this is Indian Bob. A pleasure. How Hello. You doing? Hey, y'all. Roosevelt ain't here yet. Colonel Wood know you, y'all rather? Mm. No, uh, we just got here. I'm William Tiffany. Good, Rich. A pleasure to meet you. Hello, Bill. I'm Henry. Nice That's Indian Bob. Henry? Indian Bob, Bob Craig Wadsworth. Nice Good, Rich. Woodbury. Indian Bob, Craig Wadsworth. Craig Wadsworth. My pleasure. My pleasure. Let's see. Colonel Wood, he's over the top of that hill. It's a pretty good piece. A good distance. Damn good distance. What you need is a horse. Yes, sir, what you need is a horse. Have you got one? Right there. And he's a good one, too. That's very kind of you. You take him, Craig. I'd like to see what's going on right. around here. All right, well, I'll sign us all in. Yeah. Wadsworth. Yeah. I'll take the bag for you. Thank you, Robert. Wadsworth, isn't it? Yes, Craig. This is a marvelous attire. Nice yes. fellows, hmm? Especially the best. He's a sweet animal. You're gonna like him. Got a good gait. You may want to pull your hat down. I'll be right back. He's a spirited mount. Well, I'll be go to hell. Where'd he learn to ride like that? Wadsworth is the best polo player in the country. Do you play polo? Oh, yeah, every day, right after my bubble bath. Breaking us up in the troops tomorrow. Yeah, well, I won't be around here to see it. You lighting out, Henry? I ain't taking another day of this. You going back for the money? Well, now, do you think I'd pull a stitch on my compadre? <laughs> you damn right you would. Well, you're welcome to come, and you're a fool if you don't. I'd like to meet this Roosevelt character, then I'll make up my mind. What are you saying? You getting patriotic? When them bands were playing and people waving, hell, no one ever thought well of me my whole life. And you think these people are any different? Wake up. I think they are different. Besides that, the food's good, and there's plenty of it. Well, suit yourself. Mother Nash never raised no foolish children. Folks, help spread, huh? <laughs> we 
have not yet negotiated a deal. Mm -hmm. You don't owe me any money. What you and the boys are doing for all of us is enough. You're a rough rider. I feel honored. Far, did you? Did somebody catch you? Gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Roosevelt. That's you. It's good to see you doing a hard day's labor for a change. <laughs> Leonard! Leonard, I'm here! Can you see out of them glasses? I wouldn't question his vision, gentlemen. He thrashed a man in the Dakotas for calling him four eyes. Thrashed the fella? Thrashed. I love grits. My mother was a southerner. She used to make grits every morning. When we were good and not misbehaving, she'd make us cheese grits. <laughs> Obtain sufficient crag rifles and ammunition for our regiment, sir. As I knew you would, Theodore. They'll be on the train tomorrow with the uniforms and the rest of my baggage. Your baggage? I'll see that wagons and mules are standing by. I had a bit of a problem with the older general. They recommended that we use Springfield rifles with black powder. They said we could hide behind the smoke. Imagine that! <laughs> I told them this regiment won't be hiding. Will it, sir? Theodore, did you get any sleep? Oh, Leonard! I had my tailor at Brooks Brothers make this uniform for me. What do you think? Well, I think it's... Splendid! I had one prepared for you as well. This... This is bowling! <laughs> March yard! Back! Indian mob! G Troop! Go to G Troop! Castillo! Carico! Erickson! G Troop! Trip is yours, sir. Gentlemen, this is the last time I will call you that. From now on, you are troopers. And this troop, G Troop, is your home. It is all you need to know or care about. Trust nothing else, including the rest of this regiment. These are your brothers. You won't be fit to have friends or acquaintances outside of G Troop. You won't be safe in civilized society. This day on, you are to become predators, wolves. You will learn to disregard all human life. Save that of G Troop. Attention, Troop! <coughs> to his left, march. Anybody ever seen a bullfight? Spaniards enjoy bullfights. Spaniards are cruel. The greatest feat of arms in the history of civilization was wrought by Spaniards. Anybody know what that was? The defeat of the Texans at the Alamo. Oh, yeah. Wrong! 900 Spaniards under Hernando Cortez killed 100,000 Aztecs. They did this with swords. 
And they raped all the women and took the gold. Minstrel boy. Become our troop song. You will learn it well. It will salve your souls. Trooper Smoke, we get them started, please, sir. The minstrel boy to the war is gone. In the ranks of death you will find him. His father's sword he hath girded on, and his wild heart slung behind him. Land of song, said the warrior bard, the wall the world betrays thee. One sword at least I Stephen Crane? Aren't you? Yes, and you, sir. Edward Marshall. <laughs> of course you are. I read your book. Enjoy it. Almost, um, almost as if you had been there. Which, of course, you haven't. Did I make any mistakes? A few. I shall do better the next time. Uh, if there is a next time. After all, it is dangerous work. But then again, I hear you have the luck of a drunk. Maybe you could watch out for me. Well, if there's anything that I can do, you just ask. Um, perhaps you could suggest a good bordello. His name is Del Shenay. Been taught since childhood to be patient, quiet, cruel. War is an argument. The best way to end the argument is to kill the other fellow. This is what you must become a man killer. <laughs> You two are now acting platoon sergeants. Yes, sir. Take over the troops. Prepare to march. Yes, sir. For sergeant, move them out. Hey, that's out. Hide, post the left. Sergeant Major, have some water. Hey, go, sir. Load them cayuses on the train. Too old for this. Too old for this. I don't know about that, Captain. All I want is this train to get back by dinner.
shame. The train went without us. Ain't that a shame? I don't know about you boys. Supper means a lot to me. Stop serving it at eight. Come on, Dale. That son of a gun. My feet hurt. Get used to it. Well, I'm hungry. We didn't eat all day. You goddamn right we didn't. I ain't staying out here all night without a horse. How about a race? The elegance Columbia? How about you shut up? <laughs> Andale, compadres. Do you want to starve? Move! Vámonos! supposed to be a soldier. Get that water. I need some water. You sit and take a drink. Pick up your compadre Nash. You don't mean nothing to me. You want to kill me, senor? Eh? Huh? Do it now. No, I don't think I will. Come on, Eli. You're going to be good amigos, ¿me entienden? Andale. Bambosos. Commission Kane and Castillo. Leave Castillo where he is and put Kane in G Troop. Very well, sir. All in all, I'd say you're shaping up into an adequate officer. Don't let that go to your head. No, sir. I shouldn't do that. human about him. He don't even talk. He ain't got nothing to say. Well, he's a wild engine. What are you? Sue. You know, the ones that got Custer. I have something personal to ask. Tell me the truth. I'll know otherwise. How many of you have ever killed a man? Come on, hands. I might have got him. I mean, I, I might have got him. He was far away. I mean, he was a long way off. I 
I've got four notches. I know I've never brought me any joy, sir. What about you, Nash? Sir? Ain't you such a bad hombre? Oh, no, sir. No, I never hurt no one. Not face to face. All right, then. How many of you ever killed a deer or a horse or a cow? I killed a bear once. So, I didn't like it. That's fine, Sergeant. On your feet, trooper. You kill a lot of game, have you, Mr. Fish? Yes, sir. I've been a fair woodsman all my life. And you take two of these men who haven't killed anything, have them kill a deer before breakfast. We'll eat it for dinner. You do that, Mr. Fish? Sir, yes, sir. Good. And you are now Sergeant Fish. Thank you, sir. Any questions? What do we use as weapons, sir? Your Springfield 30 caliber carbine of the Craig Jorgensen design. This weapon is a magazine fed bolt action. It fires a modern smokeless cartridge. You can fire this weapon at ranges accurately up to 1,000 yards. What this means to you, Cowboy, Steve Crane, Captain, is you may not from see the journal. Right I read your book. You liked it, I bet. That is the army way. That is the way we are going to teach you using the prone, the kneeling, and the offhand positions. I may not see the enemy at a thousand yards, but if I see him at 900. Bye bye. Load one round. Ready? Fire! Eli! Tiffany! Nash! You missed! Get down there and kill the enemy! All right, Eli, get him! Move! Run, run! Go, guys! Go, go. Run! Go, go. Damn it, move! That's broken! Get down there! It's a rather novel approach. You know, most men, no matter how hard they've lived, won't throw down on one another. You mean kill them? How do you think Wes Harden and Clay Allison always got their opponents? Is there better shots? Both men were drunken louts. They had the ability to murder their fellow man. It is murder, isn't it? You betcha. You gonna make these men murder us? Gonna try. I think the 1st United States Volunteer Cavalry could whip Caesar's 10th Legion. I think these men could ride with Genghis Khan. <laughs> they are, without peer, the best of American manhood. We've got Indians, New York City policemen, football players, polo players, rowing champions, bounty hunters, and bronco busters. <laughs> and one man, I'm sorry to say, who used to work for the Internal Revenue Service. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you boys might be interested in what the Spanish think of us. <clears throat> the average American is only five feet two inches due to living entirely on vegetables. <laughs> this because they sell all their beef to other countries, so eager are they to make money. <laughs> yes, they must be hallucinating. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't had a vegetable since I was seven. That is damn fine medicine, Nash. Best I ever had. If you'll excuse me, gentlemen. But I must retire, for I have much paperwork to do for Colonel Wood. Evening, gentlemen. Evening, sir. Can I get that, sir? Uh, no, I, I'll take this back. My quarters. Carry on. See you on the morrow. Sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. How about that? Old Rosie remembered my name. 
Sure did. He remembered my name. This is to wipe your nose with, not to wear around your neck. I see we're letting little boys in here now. What is this knife on this man's belt? Do you have a place setting to go with that knife, Trooper? No, Sergeant Major. What is your name? William Tiffany, Sergeant Major. Tiffany? My grandma has a little dog named Tiffany. I need two men to clean up the horse crap from the freight cars. Where did you go to school? Yale, Sergeant Major. Oh, a lucky dog boy. Well, that explains the smell. I didn't go to school. And you? Harvard, sir. I am not a sir. I am a sergeant major. I work sergeant for a living. Sergeant major, sir. Let's just have the two little rich boys clean out the horse crap from the freight cars. Their little handy's dirty. Get out of here. Sir. I'm conducting an inspection of the men. I demand the courtesy of being addressed by my rank. Beat it, Sergeant. Stand at ease, Trooper. We will still need the horse manure shoveled out of those cars. Two volunteers. Wadsworth. Sir. Dad. Yes. Sir. Yes. That is. It is with deep concern that for... Is this uh, going to be a long speech, Tiffany? Uh, no, sir. Very well. For the welfare of this regiment that my father presents these tokens of his appreciation. Colts machine guns. Lieutenant Payne, I want you to take Tiffany and whatever men you need and form a rapid fire squad. Our training here, troopers, is almost done. We'll be heading to Florida. And on to Cuba! Yeah! Be leaving behind a friend of the troop. I'd like to say something to you. Bill? My friends. In G Troop, it has been an honor and a pleasure to train you. I only wish I could go with you. But my people are still prisoners of war. And I have pressing duties at Carlisle Indian Academy. You've made me proud. You have made yourselves proud. Good day. Good luck. Good hunting. When we get these people to Tampa right now, or they're going to start shooting each other. What's the matter with you people, you soldiers? Anymore. Train too long to act like this. They're going to Cuba to kill Spaniards. The Barker sons be not dismayed. Then join with me, each jovial play Confuse and sing and lingerie. And help me with the chorus. We'll break windows, we'll break doors. I'll wash them down by threes and fours. Then let the doctors work the cures and tinker up our bruises. Instead of spying. All right, Rep. Brenner! Saddle up! Instead of small, we'll drop down hill and pay the reckoning on the hill. No man for the children to chill from Gary Owen and Glory. They'll beat the police out of fun. They'll beat the mayor and sheriff. So we are the boys. No man dares done if he regards his whole skin. Our hearts are stout, have got no faith. Our suit is gone from whence we came. Wherever we go, they dread the name of Gary Owen and Glory.
I'll introduce you. Evidence. The trains are backed up from here to Columbia, South Carolina, sir. May interesting gentlemen to learn that Admiral Sampson has notified McKinley that a landing force of 10,000 men could take place in 48 hours. How would he know that? <laughs> exactly, General. By God, how would he? Transport ships haven't even got here yet. Rations and supplies still aboard trains. And our quartermaster here tells us he, he has no idea which trains. I've never seen anything like it. By God, I've never seen anything like it in my lifetime. That's because nothing like this has ever happened in your lifetime. I truly was not prepared for the sight of you. I look well. Oh, eat it. Right machine. Right machine. I, I suggest that we adjourn to our room before dinner. Thea, after all these years of marriage. Yes, I'm talking now. But Thea just got here. You've been here an hour. <laughs> so pleased to meet you, Colonel. I've been meaning to discuss your work on the North American Elf. Ah, delighted, Major, delighted. But perhaps another time? Oh, yes, uh, yes. Excuse us. Thank you. Whew. You look fit, Theodore. I am fit, Edith. I am very fit. <laughs> Do you know, on the way down here, the southern people wave flags at the train. Little American flags. They gave the soldiers coffee with molasses and sweets, and the... Well, the soldiers gave the girls their buttons. It was really... Oh, the, remarkable. <laughs> Let's turn to our room now. Now, see, we... We are expected to dinner at nine. We'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll race you. I'm so fit, I'll beat you up so thirsty. Now, see. That General Shafter's in way over his head. Way over. As big as a house to boot. I just hope you were polite, Daddy. What if I wasn't? What the hell are they gonna I'll do to me? Sentence. You listen to me, son. I am a volunteer. I am a U.S. congressman. I'm here on personal request by the President of the United States. And I'm a reb. I understand, Listen sir. to me very closely. I have got these Yankees by the long john. General Wheeler. I trust you won't mind this brief intrusion, but I'm Horatio Swales. I was a member of the Union Cavalry that opposed you in the fighting around Atlanta. Nice to meet you, sir. This is my son, William. And you'll forgive me if I tell you that Atlanta wasn't one of my fondest memories. Oh, well, of course, General. I should have killed that son of a bitch long ago to keep him from breeding. Lieutenant John Pershing, 10th Cavalry. You requested me? Yes, Pershing. I understand you have a crack outfit here. Best in the regular army. That's right, sir. Combat soldiers. Proud of it. Been with these Negro soldiers for a long time? They call me Black Jack. These men would follow me into hell, and I couldn't ask for better company. Well. You can appreciate that my men are somewhat unrefined. Not quite housebroken. Sir, we will accept no breach of military behavior. Wouldn't ask for that. You and your sergeant care to have a little sip of bourbon whiskey with me? It's a dry county, sir. But would you like some? Drink between the fighting men. I don't see that that would be uh... a breach of military behavior. Exactly, sir. I don't want to enter. Sergeant Buck. Yes, sir. You care to refresh yourself? I've had water earlier today, sir. Would you care to refresh yourself? Refresh myself? I would, sir. Very well. Uh, Captain, if you don't mind my asking, where did you procure this ration? I was saying my men are somewhat unconventional. They need to be understood in that light. Nice cream parlor. Yes, sir.
Must you really go? I could hardly spend the night in a hotel while my men sleep on the ground. It might be the last night we... Then it was time well spent. blockade is in place and the Spanish have made no attempts to sort either ships. And not one column has left Havana to reinforce Santiago. Maybe they're just stupid. Or lazy. Or don't take us seriously. You're setting me up, aren't you? I have no idea of what you might mean. Mr. President. All right, you sons of bitches, do it. Pass this along. That wrong. Richard, send this. Yes, sir. War Department of Fifth Corps. Headquarters? Commence offensive operations immediately. Departure in 12 hours? Why weren't we informed? Well, my old friend Bedford Forrest told me getting there first is half the battle. Where'd you get fresh hog? Where, sir? Where must we get to first? The boats. But there's not enough of them, so do you want to swim to Cuba? You stole us all. <laughs> we caught the gator and the snake. Snake? Footless animal stew, sir. <clears throat> You're on transport with the 71st New York. There's only room for one regiment, and it better be yours. The 71st just found out about this like you. They're over at Tampa Heights. Now, I have never seen a Yankee infantry get up and march nine miles in less than a day. Aha! But we will be mounted. No, no, what? You ain't taking any horses. You're dismounted cavalry. No horses, <laughs> General but Wheeler. But we trained as <laughs> cavalry! What's in this jug? I believe it is wrong, Daddy. Mm-hmm. That's shine. You show some discipline, Roosevelt. Yes, sir. If you want to fight, it's going to be on foot. Yes, sir. Cook, get me some more of this serpent. Some of that Mr. Hogg. My pleasure, sir. Why don't you take a train? General Joe, we don't have the use of a train. Commandeer one. Sons of Medica, form the regiment! Douglas, saddled officers, claw! Forces landed. Well, it says here there was no losses. It was a circus, as far as I can tell. If one company of Spaniards had opposed them, they'd all be dead. We'd still be a third-rate agricultural experiment. Well, <clears throat> God takes care of drunks and mad men in the American army. Hearst said it was a, he said it looked like a yachting party. Where are the Spaniards? Well, they landed at Daiquiri. Daiquiri? Yeah. 
Isn't that a new summer cocktail? Now you're getting the idea, Mr. Hay. Those Spaniards had any sense, they'd hit us on the beach here. Don't say that too loud. Take it, Sergeant the Guard! Get him up! Can any of you tell me where those Spanish bastards are? I can. Well, then speak up. I can show you where all the bastards are. But you'll get us some food, okay? Momentigo, soldaje. Major Funston, General. These are my men. Are you an American? Soldier of fortune. Soldier of fortune, my ass. You work for the State Department. Command General Gomez's artillery. I don't see any artillery. Just this. Yeah. And don't think you can put anything over on me, Mr. Funston, because I am a United States congressman. You want to see some Spaniards, you say? That's why I'm here. Can you get us some food or what? Oh, my God. I'll see what I can do. Get a requisition to Quartermaster and get these guys some food right now. Yes, sir. You stay here. I'll be right back. And don't lose them Spaniels. Yes, sir. We gotta teach you boys how to vote. Comprende? He's the yod. He's not coming ashore. Not until tomorrow. If the sea's very, very calm. And they get a bigger boat. It must be General Shafter. He's too big to land. They might as well swim to shore. <laughs> Set up a perimeter defense. Well, then let's use the cavalry, Roosevelt's men and the Negroes. They're amateurs anyway, and we'll use the professional infantry to slowly probe towards Santiago with artillery support. You can send some cruisers in here. Son, I want you to go fetch the Rough Riders in the 10th, the Buffalo Soldiers, and bring him back to that fella Funston up on the hill. I'll meet you there and make no fuss. Yes, sir. These fellas don't know what the hell they're doing. Take way up ahead. Dismounted cavalry coming through. Theodore, take us up the hill. Yes, sir. Great. 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 I think Wheeler is exceeding his authority. Could lead to an interesting disaster. What do you say? Let's go along. No, no, you go. I have a bottle of rum in the and celebrate with one of these Cuban insurrectas. Could miss the whole damn thing. When the time comes, I'll walk toward the sound of the guns. Good hunting. Mm. And to you, sir. Oh. Cuba Libre! My darling. Cuba Libre! Oh, yes, you're mine, and I love you best of all. When you must be my woman, or I'll have no woman at all. There'll be a hot time, Santiago, tonight. There'll be a hot time, Santiago, tonight. Yeah. When you hear the bells go ding a ling, and we'll all join round and sweetly you must sing. And when the verse is true, the chorus all join in. Amigos! I beat all the Yankees! Ah! 
Better get you out of here, General. Nonsense. Same words. Besides, they're mostly shooting each other. General, I don't like this jungle area in here. Maybe we should wait for some artillery to come up. We won't need it. It's too thick. It opens up here at Las Guasimas, where Mr. Funson killed that Spaniard. And by the way, damn quick shot. Thank you, sir. Lieutenant Pershing? Sir. We should inform your colonel that I want the 10th Cavalry to swing out wide to the left. We'll be there, sir. Colonel Wood, take your men ahead, stay to the right, kind of skulk it out, spread out in this stuff. Yes, sir. I believe they'll fortify along the San Juan River. This is a natural defensive position. Oh, oh it's getting light. We're going to be on them by the time we see our sights. Any questions? Alan? Sir? Reconnoiter, Farwood. Very well, sir. Sergeant Fish. Yes, sir. Give me four of your men. I'll take point. Not without me. Isabel, Eli, Neville, hasten forward to me. Follow me at an interval. Damn. What's the matter? This damn Indian ate all my tomatoes. Look at him. You're liable to be killed today anyway. You need tomatoes? Let's go. Yeah. G, F, and D off to the right, link up with the Cubans. I'll take the remainder to the left and find the tenth. Very well, sir. <gasps> Captain O'Neill? Sir. Proceed bearing right, link up with the Cubans. They're in there, boys. Let's get after them. Could be dangerous. Troops D and F, follow me. One in the chamber, safety's on. Must be fighting Joe Spaniard. Let's get across. Visit the West Mediterranean thrush. Now that's a West Mediterranean thrush, native of the coast of Catalonia. wounded. Have you seen him, Captain? Whatever I see, we're here! I should continue to fight. Just, just, pull the pistol. 
Eli, my friend, are you all right? I'm all right. Fish. Fish. Shot out from under me in 30 years. Woo! It's still a thrill. From the mount, you listen. I want you to advance. Link up with Wood. Bust right into him. Keep your men out ahead. Off to the right. Skulk it out. Yes, sir. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Good. Belly Yankee generals. They're unreliable. They're unforgivable. We got a battle to fight. Get on your horse. Let's go. What's happening up there? Spaniards, sir. Lots of them. They killed Hamilton. Sergeant Fish, sir. God, his poor mother. Well, let's go! Wanna get back at them? You bet Damn so. Right, sir. Tie up to the right! Keep firing, lads! Help! Cursed saber. Thank you. I thought the regular infantry was supposed to lead any advance. General Wheeler pushed out there without informing me, and I could not stop. The record will show that I tried. Yes, burst, boys. Keep your distance out there. We killed them all. They killed my captain. Dirty, rotten Mexican bastards kill my captain! You hear me? Bastard! Alan, how are you, son? This place that machine gun forward. Yes, sir!
Theodore! Colonel! Sir, you can see their hats. Skirmishers extend to the right. Lieutenant, casualties? Kane, he's dead. Colonel! I, sir, I believe I got one, sir. You? Colonel Roosevelt, we lost a man, sir. Trooper Baird. <sighs> Poor man. Move on. 